So I've been pretty excited to do this unboxing with you guys, but I really haven't been in any sort of rush only because everything that I'm unboxing today is for open water and everything in my area is still frozen. So I can't really use anything. Really millipede? Did you really have to do that? Now, although I picked up all of these packages, plus this one right here. About two weeks ago, I still remember everything that I got. Only because a couple of these things in here I bought for a new technique that I've never used before. Actually, two techniques that I've never used before. So I'm pretty excited to show you guys. But not only that, I got some good deals on some jackal baits from Tackle Warehouse. And not only do I have an unboxing from Tackle Warehouse, but this bigger unboxing here, is from Amazon. So I kind of technically have four unboxings. I have three from Tackle Warehouse and then I have this one big one from Amazon. Now full disclosure, I've already opened the Amazon package but I have yet to open the Tackle Warehouse order. And typically I don't like waiting so long to open my packages but I'm kind of banking on the fact that everything is right with my order. They've already messed up my Amazon order, so who knows, maybe they also messed up my Tackle Warehouse order as well. I hope not, but maybe. And uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to be doing some real work. And you'll kind of see what I mean at the end of the video. Just stay tuned. Alright, so what I think I'm going to do is start off with the unopened Tackle Warehouse boxes, and then I'll end with the Amazon boxes, or I guess technically the one Amazon box. So I remembered exactly what I ordered, but I don't actually know which is which. I don't know what came in which box. So uh, we're just going to open a random one here, and we're just going to uh, get the step in. Oh, that's awesome. It came in two. All right. So let's give you guys a uh, quick look right here. Like I said kind of earlier, got a couple Jackal, got a couple uh, baits from Raid, got some hair jigs. And just like in all of my videos, I go through everything. So even if this video goes like 40 minutes, that's all right. All right, well, Tackle Warehouse kind of already neatly uh, put it in the box. So we'll just start with uh, whatever is on top and not a bad choice. Like I just mentioned, I picked out a few techniques that I really wanted to try out for the first time. Now these hair jigs are from Queens Tackle. Now I picked up the only two colors that they had at Tackle Warehouse, black and white. Now let's take them both out of the package. We'll start with black. All right, so this is 3 8 of an ounce. And although it does look pretty bushy right now when this thing is under the water it is going to be pretty streamlined now i plan on using no trailer on this jig and quite literally i plan on just casting out letting it sink to the bottom and reeling straight back to me maybe pausing it ever so slightly but just doing a super slow retrieve on the bottom now these hair jigs are 3 8 of an ounce and i think that's just kind of an overall great weight only because a half of an ounce might be a little bit too heavy for shallow water and like a quarter of an ounce might be a little bit too light for deep water. So 3 8 of an ounce is kind of that perfect in between. And one thing that Tackle Warehouse didn't really say, but these come two to a package, which is really sweet. These were $8.99, so I figured I was paying $8.99 for one hair jig. I didn't realize two came in each package, so I'm actually pretty pumped about that. That was a very nice surprise. Now let's take a quick look at the uh, white hair jig. Literally the same thing as the black, just in white. And basically black and white are the only two colors you're gonna need in hair jigs. If I really had to choose one, I would choose black over white only because black has just worked better for me in the past. Now I will say the hook is pretty light wire. Now, I would not throw this bait on anything heavier than a medium power rod, only because me doing that right there started bending the hook out. So super light wire hook, but I'm all right with that because I'm not gonna be throwing this on like a heavy power with braid or anything like that. Now, if you look, see if I can zoom in right here. 
If you look on the side of every single jig that comes in the packages, it says 10.5. Now I'm assuming that's 10.5 grams and uh, 10.5 grams comes out to 3 eighths of an ounce. As you can plainly see on the package right here. Now to find tungsten hair jigs on Tackle Warehouse was actually kind of difficult. Um, these were like the only ones that were labeled as tungsten. I believe like 90% of the hair jigs on Tackle Warehouse are lead, maybe even more than 90%. But this was the first brand that I saw that had tungsten hair jigs, so that's why I picked them up. In New Hampshire, jigs under an ounce have to be lead free. So that's why I went with tungsten. All right, so Tackle Warehouse was having a sale on quite a few jackal baits. So I ended up picking quite a few jackal baits up. Now these were typically $8 a butt. On sale, they were only five bucks a piece. So I picked up three packages. So these are the Jackal Nico Flicks. And these are 5.8 inches in prism shad. So just like the name implies, I am going to be Nico rigging this bait. And let's uh, take it out of the package real quick. These uh, have a stank to them. They've got a stank to them. Now, when I typically think of prism shed, I think more of a clear bait than this. So originally I wasn't going to pick it up, but because it has all this green pumpkin, it has all this blue, it almost reminds me of a baby bass or almost an Okeechobee craw color with that green and blue color. So I'm like, you know what? For five bucks, why not try it out? This looks like the perfect Nico bait. Now, right on the package, it says it has a thicker head design for a nail weight. And uh, honestly, that is perfect. Now, I kind of wish I wasn't being lazy right now, but basically a Nico rig is a wacky rig hook in the middle of the worm with a nail weight in the head of the bait. So the Nico rig is just a super simple rig, nothing too complicated, but I definitely see myself using this in about 20 feet of water for smallmouth. And this color here would actually work pretty well in clear and stained water. Now, I would not use this color in like chocolate milk color or really stained water only because it is relatively clear. I would use more opaque colors in dirty water like blacks and whites and chartreuse is not so much this kind of clear bait. Now for five bucks I got eight worms and uh, that's not too bad. So for 15 bucks I got 24 worms. And I'm actually super excited to uh, try these out in the spring. Now, this isn't the only jackal baits I got on sale. Now that I'm looking in this box, the other box actually has more jackal baits. Moving on to the last thing in the box. This is from Raid Japan, and this is the big two-way in Scuppernog. Now, Scuppernog is not really a color found in the States very often, but in Japan, Scuppernog is actually a very popular bait, and I think it's actually really cool. And you better believe we're gonna take it out of the package. Oh, that's cool. It comes like in a little tray. That's pretty neat. I'm not gonna lie. And we'll just uh, take one out. Now, this is a big two-way. And just like the name implies, this is the bigger version of the two-way. They have a smaller version and a bigger version. And I just figured the three-inch two-way would be perfect for wacky rigging or even using on a drop shot if I wanted to. Now, full disclosure, I've never actually used this bait from Raid Japan. But when I saw this at Tackle Warehouse, I had to try it out. This thing looks super neat. Now, these Raid Japan two-ways were not very cheap. They were about $10 dollars per package and they only come with about six per package and these are definitely scented as well it kind of smells like a dead shrimp not as strong as those jackal baits but uh pretty stinky but overall i think this is a super neat bait and again i can't wait to try this out in the springtime now i honestly picture myself using this for large mouth and small mouth but a little bit more large mouth over small mouth. And I just think this color Scuppernog is super neat. It's like a dark red maroon brown color. Super cool. 
but honestly this just is a very versatile bait you could throw it on a drop shot ned rig you could wacky rig this all right so let's go into box number two and, uh, let's just start off with more jackal baits these are the jackal honey nuggets in cola blue color these are 3.8 inches and just like the other jackal baits these are stinky could look like a lot of things underneath the water this is neat look at this bait you could texas rig this you could use it as a jig trailer what i'm gonna do is use this as a free rig now earlier in this video i mentioned there was two techniques that i've never used before that were in these boxes and this is the second one here this bait i specifically bought for a free rig now basically what a free rig is is an unpegged texas rig with a drop shot bait now i already know a lot of people think that a free rig is no different than an unpegged texas rig but it's really not. If you look at underwater footage of the two, they are not really the same. A free rig with that weight kind of pointed, it drops super quick down to the bottom. And a free rig bait will just kind of float slowly down to the bottom weightless. With an unpegged Texas rig, this bait is really going to fall quite quickly quickly down to the bottom. You're not going to have that weightless action, but I just think this looks super cool. Like, look at this thing. Like, there's no way this thing's not going to uh, catch some fish. I'm super excited to try this out in the uh, springtime. And I just think this color is super neat as well. It's called Cola Blue. It's basically just kind of like a scupper nog color with blue flake. Uh, just like the other jackal baits I bought these were five bucks a piece so uh, for ten bucks Not too shabby So this next thing I picked up from tackle warehouse was kind of a gamble But the thing is I got it for 50% off So even if it completely fails and turns out to be kind of a dud It's really not that bad because I got it for 50% off But this is a proficiency bait caster and they call it the p413 i'm not exactly sure what that stands for but it's a seven three to one gear ratio and it's a right-handed retrieve now uh now let's kind of uh take it out of the package together here i've never owned a proficiency reel before but i kind of like the pun in the name it's not that bad okay that's it just comes with some foam and the reel. At least it comes with a box, if you know what I'm saying. All right. That's a uh, very smooth. So first impressions, it's not the most quiet, but uh, it, it's actually pretty smooth. I really like the blue and dark silver accent. And originally this is $80 on Tackle Warehouse, but I got it on sale for $39. So for $39, I really can't complain at all for how it feels right off the bat. So obviously I'm not taking this out on the water right now considering everything is still frozen. But uh, my first impressions of this reel is honestly good now it's not too light to where it feels like a toy and plasticky but it's also not heavy at all to where it kind of just feels like a piece of lead it came with this card but it doesn't show a weight now i have this 13 fishing fate green rod this is a 6.7 medium and it's rated for lures 1 8 of an ounce to 3 8 of an ounce so it's a pretty light power rod and this 13 fishing rod is what i'm going to be throwing jerk baits and crank baits on and i thought for 80 dollars you really couldn't go wrong it's not like i'm going frogging or punching or using big swim baits when you're using like jerk baits and crank baits and something like that where you're not really setting the hook very hard you can kind of get away with a cheaper reel i can't say whether or not it's going to be durable and it's going to last but uh, first impressions, it uh, fits my hand 
pretty well. It also comes with these foam knobs, but to be honest with you, I'm not super picky with my rods. I'm not super picky with my reels. So if they were cork knobs, it would be fine. If they were wind grip knobs, I would be fine. But I think it's like EVA foam it's called. All right, so uh, let's not waste any more time and stick it right on this rod right now. And just kind of get a feel. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I'm not going to lie. It does not look too shabby. But a full disclosure as well, I have to pick up two more reels. So if you guys have any recommendations, just leave a comment below and uh, I'll check them out. I really want to be around that $100 mark and I mean that really loosely like it could be as low as fifty dollars on sale or it could be as high as two hundred dollars on sale basically kind of around that hundred dollar mark yeah so overall as of right now i'm pretty happy with this purchase for only forty dollars i thought i got a pretty good deal and not only that i got this rod on sale too i believe this rod is eighty dollars brand new or at least it used to be but I picked up that at Dick's Sporting Goods for 50% off for like 40 bucks, I think. You guys can go back into my video library and uh, see how much it actually was. I kind of forgot. But I do remember making a video with this rod in it. And uh, one thing that I'll say too, that it has external brakes as well. So if you're kind of new to using a baitcaster, you can really kind of zero in your brakes very easily. You don't have to open that side plate at all. And I'm going to assume this is just a graphite reel because it was $80. Typically, when you're under that $100 range, the frames are going to be graphite. But then once you get up to the $100 plus dollar mark, you're going to be going into the aluminum frame. And the aluminum frame reels are just going to be slightly more durable, in my opinion. Now, the line that I'm going to be putting on this reel is 12-pound Sunline Sniper. And I think 12-pound is just kind of an overall good line for jerkbaits and crankbaits. Now, when I say crankbaits i'm talking more along the lines of square bills and like dt6s if i was going to use something like a crankbait that was going to dive down to like 20 feet i would not be using a medium power rod i'd kind of be stepping up my rod power to that medium heavy so we just went over the first two boxes from tackle warehouse now we are going after the tube and inside this tube i have not opened it yet so to be honest with you i don't even know if this rod is broken or not that's another reason why i don't really recommend uh you waiting this long to open up your packages just in case something is wrong you can immediately return it what do we got in here little chalupa i want to open the wrong side it's not coming out I think I opened the wrong side. So in a previous video, you guys heard me say I needed a new medium light powered rod. And that is because my Ned rig rod, my buddy sat on and snapped off like the first three eyelets. So I just had to replace that. And not only that, I have a drop shot rod that I have to replace as well. But I figured one thing at a time, all right nothing's broken well nothing looks broken at the moment but i picked up a medium light powell diesel rod and again i got this on sale for 89 dollars. i believe typically it's a hundred dollars but uh, on sale for 90 bucks. I figured why not try it out. Now I'm really just kind of giving you guys my first impressions. Obviously because everything is still covered in ice, I can't just bring this outside and fish. So everything is just kind of my first impressions. And uh, in first impressions, I really like it. It feels super light. Maybe not as light as my St. Croix Premier rods, but to be fair, my St. Croix Premier rods are $150. Now this rod is seven foot one inch and it's rated from one eighth of an ounce to three eighths. 
of an ounce. And mainly I'm going to be throwing my Neds on this rod. Now this is my Ned Rig rod right here. I have a Shimano Miro Bell 2500. And this used to be my St. Croix Premier Medium Light Rod. But because I snapped off the first three eyelets, it's more of a medium. And instead of being seven foot, it's more like six, seven something like that a six seven medium that's why i have this shaky head on it at the moment but because i picked up that powell diesel rod i think what i'm going to do is switch out this rod for that rod right quick and some of you i'm sure noticed right off the bat i don't have like any line right here and you're totally correct what happened was i just kind of ran out of line towards the end of last year. And I just figured because I only had a month or two left of open water fishing, I would just wait until this year to uh, reline this with a full spool. Now my favorite main line to use for Ned Rigs is YGK. And that is because YGK sinks. And I just think sinking braid really helps with the action of the baits with your drop shot and Ned Rigs and stuff like that. But that line is $30 for like 120 yards. So I ended up picking Sunline SX1. And I like SX1 from Sunline as an alternative only because that line is neutrally buoyant. It doesn't sink. But because my bait obviously will sink, it will not interfere with my line. Now, if you use a floating braid, in my opinion, it does kind of interfere with the action of the bait. Only because like on a cast, a far cast, with that floating braid, what's going to happen is it's going to kind of create a bow in your line. And you're not going to have a direct connection to your bait. Now, if you're using a sinking braid or like a neutral buoyant braid, I think you just kind of have better sensitivity and kind of more of a direct contact with your bait. And that's kind of why I like those braids for finesse fishing. But a Ned Rig is another bait I'm going to have tied on in the springtime and I can't wait to uh, try this out. All right, so moving on to arguably the most exciting part of this video, not for me, but for you guys. So as you guys know, typically in my unboxing videos, I do a giveaway. And not just any old giveaway, I do a giveaway of a limited edition Mega Bass Lure. And this video is no different now. Every giveaway I do will be in an unboxing video, but not every unboxing video will be a giveaway. And I don't announce it at all, only because I want like my real subscribers, the people who watch my full videos, to uh, get first dibs on these baits. And in two weeks, I just kind of randomly pick a winner. Now, without further ado i'm sorry i'm trying to get a uh, good view for you guys where there isn't a glare now this is a limited edition color f a akawa and this is the fine art finish limited edition now i picked up two of them one i'm gonna be hanging up on my wall the other one i'm going to be giving away now just to give a little bit of a background on the fine art finish Mega Bass lures. Every Mega Bass Vision 110 is hand painted. And basically, there's different tiers to the painters that Mega Bass hires. I believe there's like three different levels. You basically have like the rookie or amateur, and then you have like the intermediate, and then you have the top of the line painters that have been working with Mega Bass for like 20 years. And those painters are called the maestros. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what they're called. I think they're called like the maestros or the misers, something along those lines. But anyways, those are the top tier best painters that Mega Bass have. And what they do is they paint a limited edition color, AKA the Fine Art Series. And last year, I was lucky enough to uh, pick myself up two of these. Now this bait here, you're only going to find on eBay. You're not going to find in any stores anymore. This was just basically a one-time offering. Basically, never to be released again. Now because I have two of them, we're going to be opening one of them. Just because I want to give you guys a better look. The glare from the camera kind of messed it up when it was in the box. But this is F.A. Akawa. And this is one of four different fine art series colors from 2003. I think Okawa basically is just a Japanese bait fish. But just to spec out the Vision 110, it is half of an ounce. 
and just like its name, it's 110 millimeters. And this will dive all the way down to that six foot range. Now that is depending. If you're using eight pound line or less, it'll get down to that six foot range, no problem. But let's just say you decide to use 15 pound line, you're probably not going to get all the way down to that six foot range. You'll probably stay in the range of four to five feet. That's only because the lighter line you use, the deeper your jerk bait will go. So like say you kind of want to fish shallow and your jerk bait is just kind of diving too deep. If you upsize your line, even all the way up to 20 pound fluorocarbon, you can keep this bait only like two feet below the surface. Now Lala, let's take a quick look through the top of the bait. As you guys can tell, there are two tungsten bearings inside the bait, and that is the weight transfer system inside this Vision 110. And what's that going to allow this bait to do? Even though it's half of an ounce, it's really going to cast like three quarters of an ounce. So you can really fling this Vision 110 super far, and some brands of jerk baits they tend to kind of knuckleball through the water. With this weight transfer system, that eliminates that problem, and this thing will just and this thing will just rifle through the air with no problem. All right, so that is F.A. Okawa in the Fine Art series. Now I'm gonna be putting this one on my wall and giving away the unopened one. And to enter the giveaway is uh, super simple. All you have to do is be subscribed and leave a comment down below. Let me back that up a little bit. You guys don't wanna be that close to my face. And like I said, in about two weeks, I will randomly pick a winner. So actually the combo that I just put together in this video is a combo that I'd be throwing that jerk bait on. Typically I prefer slightly shorter rods for my jerk baits and that is only because I believe that those shorter rods you can really get a good pop when you want to have that jerk bait pop from side to side. If your rod is just too long what's going to end up happening is you're just going to kind of end up pulling the bait through the water and it's not really going to have that darty action from side to side. So that is it for the giveaway in about two weeks i will pick a winner in another unboxing video so if you want to be part of this giveaway you just kind of have to pay attention basically two weeks from now in another unboxing video where i'll announce the winner but moving on to the last box this is from amazon and although it's the biggest box it's uh has the least amount of stuff in it See what I mean? Quite literally uh, two things. Let's just uh, start with the boring one first. So if you guys have been watching my videos, I posted a video ice fishing with my puppy and my GoPro kept freezing. Now I believe that is because the GoPro batteries for the GoPro Hero 8 are just kind of garbage. I just don't think they're strong enough because I also use that same battery for the five, six, and seven. So I think just the battery is too weak. So I went on to Amazon and I ended up buying stronger batteries. Now, if you look at the box, it's kind of just like a no name brand. It doesn't have a brand on the box at all, but it came with three batteries for $40, which is kind of expensive but the gopro batteries are twenty dollars a piece so these are a little bit cheaper and they are more powerful all right so we got that out of the way now i was actually super excited for this gomexis handle i ordered on amazon and keyword was super excited i actually didn't buy this handle. I'll kind of overlay a video of what i actually bought right now so as you guys saw i bought purple handles not this clear i honestly thought like the purple knobs would look really cool on my green corrado only because i think green and purple look really cool together but instead i got these clear knobs so using the purple knobs are obviously out of the question which is really disappointing but to be honest with you, I'm not really the type of person who is going to return this. I'm just going to make the best of the situation. And instead of putting this on my Corrado, what I'm going to do is put this clear knob on my Shimano Tranks. 
So this is my swim bait rod. This is a Shimano Trinx 300 to a Dobbins Fury 8 foot swim bait rod. And this is the uh, combo I use to throw my bigger swim baits. But as you can tell, it has kind of a weak handle on it. I got rid of that power handle thinking that I would like this better. But I ended up liking the power handle better and I've just been kind of too lazy to switch it back out again. But I figured this combo was the perfect reel to put the Gomexis handles on. I think that combination would just look super cool. So what I'm going to do is on camera put those Gomexis handles on my Shimano Trinks. And then what I'm also going to do is put the handle for my old Shimano SLX DC onto my even older Shimano Corrado. So I really like my Shimano Corrado 200E7. I just really am not a fan of this handle. I really kind of want to get rid of it. That's why I thought that purple handle would uh, look good with this green. But unfortunately, they uh, sent me the wrong handle. So what I think I'm going to do is just put the uh, black handle on my Corrado. Now, as you guys can tell, they are actually exactly the same exact size. All I have to do is unscrew one and put it on the other. It is literally just that one bolt right there. So all I'm gonna do is uh, unscrew that right quick and then unscrew the handle on the Corrado and just do a quick switch. So uh, there we go. Switched out the uh, gray handle for this darker kind of black. Now, personally, I think I would have liked the purple Gomexis handles a little bit better but I do like these knobs better than the old one. All right, time to get rid of this ugly Bass Pro handle. And although it's not purple, it's uh, better than the Bass Pro handle. That is for sure. All right, so what a difference just the reel makes. Just from this little scrawny Bass Pro handle to this Gomexis handle, man, it makes a world of difference. Just reeling this in, it just feels so much better and it looks so much better too i'm not gonna lie but uh this camera is about to die it's flashing red at me that is it for today's unboxing now just to reiterate just to enter the giveaway all you have to do is be subscribed and leave a comment down below and in about two weeks in, in another unboxing video i'll pick the winner man that is super neat. I just think this new reel handle is super cool. I can't wait to uh, throw it this spring. So just in a matter of weeks, maybe even one month, I'll be open water fishing. And I'm super excited to try out my new year. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it.